The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, not a lot other than Boeing and GE Headed lower, which has got the Dow off. Uh, well, let's just update this now. Tell you correctly, down uh, 115. But of course, uh, the rest of the index not doing much. Uh, Nasdaq's up three and a half points, while the S&P's down one and a half. It was down maybe 10 at one point. Russell's off six. Um, everybody waiting for Godot uh, and the uh, trade deal, but it uh, uh, kind of lumbers on. Again, uh, kind of an initial push early in the morning, uh, kind of faded out, and just don't have a lot of buyers, don't have a lot of sellers. Volume uh, is at very light levels. In fact, uh, let me pull them up here. There we go. Uh, to, to, uh, so if we just talk about uh, volume, overall volume, um, last for Thursday and Friday, we had about 6.4 billion shares. Uh, day before that, 7.4 billion shares. And of course, we're looking for something in the range of about 10 billion shares to get us through those highs. If not, it's going to take a long, long time for us to get through them. So uh, we just don't have a lot of juice. Uh, whether you look at it in shares or you look at it in dollars trade, we need about uh, 400 billion. I mean, you know, on the 22nd of uh, March, we had 415 billion dollars uh, traded. On Friday, 288 billion. So I mean, it, it, whether you look at it in straight dollar terms or share terms or whatever, there just is a, the action just continues to kind of shrink, and we don't get the signals that say that we should go short, but at the same time, we don't have any signals that say at least in the uh, if you're talking about swing trading and shorter I don't see anything that really says you should be long in the equities whether it's the S&P or the Nasdaq there's just not much to hang your hat on uh, there's a few stocks of course that you can look at uh, for some movement but that's about it we're going to look through all the stocks at resistance and support levels that we can fit in today I welcome your call at 877-927-6648. I enjoy your emails at path at tfnn.com, and it would tickle me pink if you put something in the den. So, again, we know what kind of volume we had the last couple of days. So what happens today? Well, you know, we're at, at uh, an hour and 50 minutes left in the day with 3.6 billion shares. That does not bode well. I'm going to say that at the run rate today, we'd be pulling it. We're going to be lucky to hit 6 billion shares unless something dramatically happens. We really don't have anything in the way of earnings coming up, um, I think, that would literally move the market. Nothing today. Tuesday after the bell at WD40. Uh, never remember when that one actually moved the market after, or is that before the bell? Before the bell on Wednesday, we've got Delta Airlines. Uh, after that bell, Bed, Beth, Bed Bath and Below, but I don't think that's going to do much for us. Uh, and we get into Thursday, Fast and All. Again, just not a lot going on uh, after the bell, literally nothing. And then uh, we get into Friday. Now, that's finally where we've got something that'll happen. J.P. Morgan, out before the bell on Friday. Wells Fargo also. PNC Bank. Infosys. So we've got a handful of, uh, of stocks. But it, it, like I said, it, there isn't a lot out there to hang your hat on. Now, when we go in, come back 
on Monday, we've got Citigroup, Goldman Sachs uh, opening up Monday morning. And uh, I think that's it for a few days. Bank of America on Tuesday, a week from Tuesday morning, United Healthcare, Johnson & Johnson. So we start getting into it, but it starts with the financials a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you're talking about options expiration actually starting this week. Uh, they'll go delta neutral on the 10th, which is two days from now, a, a, an actual day, the 10th of April. Uh, and, of course, you've got till the 19th till expiration. But uh, they'll try to make sure that they can't uh, – they uh, – take as much money as they can and hedge the rest on the 10th, and it's got a small bullish bias. I thought this morning uh, when I saw some headlines about uh, Pinterest going public uh, that it was imminent. The first couple of articles I read, it sounded like it did. Then later on, some clarifications are it's going to be a few weeks down the line. And I've got another sneak. Wow, that was a good one. Um, so I thought, well, maybe they'll hold the market up this week to try to get Pinterest out. Uh, it, it's actually at a lower valuation than it was two years ago when they were talking about going public. They would have been probably very smart to have done it at that time. Now, the, lot, I think a lot of people see the windows starting to close uh, on a market. Well, maybe they're not as hungry for these giant uh, BMOS, um, of course, in, uh, in Silicon Valley, they call them uh, the unicorns, those stocks with bigger than a billion dollar valuation and still are not public. Uh, this one, uh, much in advance of the billion dollars, but um, certainly not as much or worth as much as it was a couple of years ago. So people, are, after uh, seeing some of the other uh, stuff like Lyft, uh, starting to say, well, maybe uh, one public is not where it's at at this time. So we're going to see over the next few days. But I think probably the market's going to be a little bit disappointed. But anyway, look for some volatility on Wednesday. I think that's going to set up maybe a slow drift higher into options expiration. But again, few sellers, few buyers. And just not enough stuff. Friday, probably the first day of the week, where we'll have some kind of catalyst to move the markets with J.P. Morgan and, of course, Citigroup on Monday. Uh, what else do we have going on? Well, uh, we're waiting with bated breath for your phone call here at 877-927-6648. Yes, I will put a worm on my tongue for the entire break. So I will have bated breath. And then we'll be back. We'll do a little bit of history. And then we'll get right into charts. So it'll be an action-packed show. Even if the market seems to want to take a siesta. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. And we're going to do a little history. As usual. You're all expecting it, aren't you? And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1950, Senator Joseph McCarthy labels Professor Owen Lattimore extremely dangerous so far as the American people are concerned in a carefully worded public speech, but stops short of calling a, him a Soviet spy. Um, you know, this started, uh, of course, what everybody called the Red Scare. Um, a lot of people said it was fake. The problem was that we had intercepted Soviet communications. There's a thing called the Verona Papers, uh, where we got a clue into how to break their codes, found out that many people actually were Soviet spies. And we took care of them kind of quietly, sometimes uh, publicly, as this was. Uh, Joseph McCarthy was a horrible drunk. Uh, if you would have been a little more measured, we probably would have done a little bit better of rooting out the traitors in our midst. Uh, today, we still have them. And of course, uh, I think any country is going to have uh, traitors to any one uh, aspect. Um, they did prosecute him, as usual, for uh, perjury in front of Congress. It took about three or four years for him to unwind that. Um, they could not of course, let everybody know that they'd already undone um, the secret codes from the uh, Soviets and uh, found out that uh, he was not only working for the Soviets, but the Chinese also. In fact, uh, he kind of got the boot uh, because it, during the war, he was actually working for us to help uh, try to put uh, uh, Chai Ken, I can't even remember his name now, uh, Chai Ken. Eh, the guy that uh, ran the country that ended up uh, who's scowing over to Taiwan uh, with all his buddies because the communists and Mao actually ended up winning that skirmish uh, and running them out of the uh, country. Chai can't check. Chai Kao shit. I'll remember it eventually. Chai, eh, anyway, uh, the capitalist, of course, went over to Taiwan and had a great time making lots of money, making lots of product being the envy of China, actually. Um, well, 
Lattimore, uh, at least, was tossed out of uh, the land of higher education, uh, eventually left the country to go uh, do his evil elsewhere. But uh, eh, enemies foreign and domestic will probably never go away for our country on this day. At least we labeled one of these guys, but they were. Even if they did go a little bit overboard, like Joseph McCarthy, um, there were a lot. Of course, I always love the uh, uh, Chamber Whitaker's story, where we didn't find out until uh, the wall came down, and we bought all the paperwork from the Soviet spy agencies, and were able to go through it and find out, yes, indeed, he was a Soviet spy also. But uh, just because they say they aren't doesn't mean it's true. And just because it's uh, they say they are, of course, doesn't mean it's so either. On this day in 1950, a dark part of our history uh, during eh, the biggest part, probably the earliest part of the Cold War. What else do we have going on out here? It's actually, if, uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. Hang on a second here. I've got that over here. Okay, we're going to go through a bunch of charts, as many as we have time for, um, and see where we're at in the resistance levels. AeroCap Holdings, AER is the symbol on this one, uh, came in uh, with 1.7 million shares on January 30th. It was at $48.82. Again, 1.7 million shares. On Friday, we had 660,000 shares. Today, just 345. So again, these legs up for mid-March on a lot of these stocks, very, very light. Uh, it doesn't mean that we've got any signal to go short, uh, but at the same time, I'd be very nervous to be long. American International Group, AIG, banging away at the $45 uh, mark, uh, came into it on February 13th with 5 million shares. Then you came in again on February 26th with 6.6 .6 million shares, got into it Friday with 4 million shares. Today, you're only doing a million shares. So when we're talking about volume uh, just contracting both to the upside and the downside, it is rather staggering. Uh, Akamai back up at its previous October 31st, 2018 high, $73.99. 4 million shares. On Friday, we got into it with 840,000 shares. Today, just 295,000 shares so far. So um, when we talk about volume contracting, we're not just, uh, it's not hyperbole or hyperbole. I always which one, I've heard people say both, hyperbole and hyperbole. But maybe the people that say hyperbole don't know how it's pronounced. I don't, for sure. Okay, all state, uh, back into its... Uh, Kind of a descending triple top going back to November 9th. Uh, you're looking for something a little over 2 million shares. Uh, spiked it on Friday with 1.4 million shares right back into the trading range today. So that's uh, telling you a little something, something. Uh, Allegion, A-L-L-E, banging away at this $94 high from December 3rd. That had 1 million shares. You got into it on February 13th with 600,000 shares. On Friday, you got into it with 746,000 shares, one of the better ones out there, but still significantly lighter volume. Alexian Pharmaceuticals, uh, looking for about 3 million shares off the September 28th high, 140.77 with, like I said, 3 million shares. Last three days, 1.2 million shares, 1.2 million shares today, just 500,000 shares so far. Uh, Ambrella, uh, the company that uh, GoPro made and is still around, gapped down significantly. This was back on June 6th of 2018, did so on almost 11 million shares. We're finally coming back here and trying to fill a little bit of the gap. Last three days, 440,000 shares. Friday, 272,000 shares. Today, 127,000 shares. So, we're not talking about a little change in volume. We're talking kind of volume changes that you, a, uh, as I like to say, a blind man could see. Um, I don't know if it's a top, but <laughs> I don't think we're going higher. <laughs> I 
<laughs> what does that make it? A plateau? The plateau of uh, 2890 on the S&P cash. Uh, Bed Bath & Below, massively shorted, came out with a little better earnings um, or, or pre-announcement and news. Uh, did gap higher recently. This is going back into the September 27th uh, gap down, though, on 52 million shares. Last couple of days as we fill this gap, 15.4 million shares. Today, 8.5 million shares is where uh, basically closing that gap. And when we come back, we'll look at Ben Franklin Resources. We've got a bunch of these stocks, but again, we're starting to get a signal. This isn't a signal with three fourths of volume or five eight. This is signals to like a tenth of the volume. We'll be back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we got Ben Franklin Resources. We're looking at it. Um, July 31st, 35, uh, 34, 62, with 9 million shares. Got into it with 5 million shares December 3rd. Now we're into it uh, on Friday, 1.6 million shares. Uh, today, 931,000 shares. Um, I would just be very careful. Uh, there's a lot of this going around. Uh, let's get rid of that one. There's not much to see in that one. Let's go take a look at that one. I don't see anything in that. 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 
Man. Man. Let's see, yeah. I'll look at that one in a second. Uh, we got an email here that came in and says, uh, you called the short squeeze in Yelp to a T last year. It popped up and ran positive for three days before pullback. Today, InBev is breaking out in the EV. Well, it certainly is. This came right back to the gap up uh, from the 26th of December. That gap up came uh, on nine and a half million shares. I uh, got into it with seven million shares on Thursday and five million shares on Friday. So it did exactly what it should. It came back, tested the bottom, did so on lighter volume, and now you've got that giant squeeze in here. Let's take a look and see what we've got for short interest in this. I think we looked at this before. Uh, two, 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 two. And BEV. Uh, two, 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 two. Yeah. Well, most days, one out of three shares has been shorted. So I don't know who's shorting a $5 stock. They should quit it. Uh, you got four days to cover and 30% short interest in it. So, yeah, um, normally what you get in these are three days. Uh, you got a lot of people on the wrong side of this, and they're losing a bunch. So uh, just figure that they're probably going to have, if they're stupid enough to be short a $5 stock, they're probably stupid enough to be on margin. So I would imagine that the high in this will come within the next three days on some margin calls. So, yeah, if you're along this thing, uh, I think you got a kind of a free roll for the next two days. And you just want to watch it. Hey, could it pull back? Yeah, it could. But my guess is that if there's, if with a 30% short interest, that they are not going to let these shorts out uh, easily. And of course, they've already lost uh, what 30%. So if, uh, yeah, I don't know what else you can say about it. Um, but yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Again, you may. This is an awful big bounce for today but yeah could you still see seven bucks out of it and possibly 790 uh, 80 which was the high back here on february 4th with 30 percent short interest the sky's the limit i don't know the actual dollar amount but i do expect this probably to peak out on wednesday so you want to watch it and you know you, I, I normally i'm not quick to get out of these until I watch them for the next two days. And you can see, but yeah, maybe they take a, the shorts to a cleaner on this one, uh, but I don't understand people shorting a $5 stock. Uh, as I like to say, for a sucker play, a trader gets sucker pay. And that's certainly uh, what you got if you're short a $5 stock on this one. Uh, to, to do what else? Take a look at Costco. Costco breaking up to the September 11th, 2018 highs. That was 244.59. Again, with 2.2 million shares. Got into it on Friday with 1.6 million shares. Today, today you've got 733,000 shares. So there is just nothing in the way of people coming in and running with the ball on these. Carters. I wonder if these are the guys that have Carter's pills. Never heard it, but apparently... Carter had a lot of pills. Only thing I know from my young upbringing where people talk about more than, he's got more something than Carter has pills. February 25th, 103.42, 4 million shares. Got into it yesterday, or Friday with 458,000 shares. Today, 182,000 shares. I don't know. I, I'm not exactly sure. Now you're going to make me, you know, the problem was before, you could just ignore things. Now I can't with Google. I have to Google everything so I know the answer of it. Um, Carter's Little Liver Pills. Okay. Formulated as a patent medicine by Samuel Carter in 1868. It was a laxative. <laughs> but called a liver pills. I don't know why. But apparently he had a lot of pills. I don't know why that is. I'll have to read more about that later. But at least I know that now. 
and I could sleep tonight. Uh, serious logic as we get into the November 2nd high of serious logic, crush, C R U S, the symbol on that, $43.25 with 2.8 million shares. Got into it March 21st with 880,000 shares. It's kind of pulled back a little bit, got to 39.29 on April 1st. Now we're back up. Volume 259,000 shares going into that 2.8 million share high. Doesn't really matter how you look at it. There's just literally no volume. And again, the thing I continue watching uh, is any kind of break. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to a nine day moving average. Uh, nine zip and zip. Zip. There we go. Uh, any close now below the next nine day moving average generally ends up, if we get one in the next couple of days, ends up being a torrentially bad signal uh, for most stocks. It's a Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern, which is for a double repenetration of the trend line higher. Uh, to, what else do we have? CVR, uh, no, not CVX. Take a look at that one. Uh, Chevron, I've been thinking that we're very close to some kind of high in energy. Uh, Chevron actually testing the May 22nd high, 128.15, which is 5.44 million shares. Uh, as we got, well, we're about a buck underneath that right now in Chevron uh, with uh, 2.8 million shares. So about half the volume of that May 22nd high of last year. And even if we want to look at more recent highs like the October 10th high at 126.48, it had 6.5 million shares. So 5.5 million shares is the most charitable, charitable view of that high. And you just don't have much. Um, you did challenge it on April, or March 19th with 4.8 million shares. So there just wasn't, uh, it just isn't that much juice to actually go run this out. Um, again, we're going to have to have some kind of catalyst to get everybody going. We're going to have a very quiet week. Uh, Donaldson and Company, talk about light volume. We had uh, to, to, on February 25th, $52.67 with uh, 570,000 shares. Today, we just uh, are right at the edge of 100,000 shares today. So again, quiet, quiet, quiet. And they say don't be quiet. Uh, or don't be uh, short and quiet. We'll be back at If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. As we said uh, early in the show, Friday is kind of the first day for a catalyst that I see. Maybe there'll be some other news come out, but uh, not a lot that I see that's going to change anything. Discover Financial uh, going through its December 3rd high that had 2.2 million shares. On Friday, 1.5 million shares. Today, just 563,000 shares. Be very quiet. We're haunting wabbits. And that's what the market is like. It is very, very quiet. Dish Network finally filling this gap. That goes back to October 23rd with 5.8 million shares. Uh, to, to, to. So what was that? That was about eh, 35 bucks or so. So on Friday, as we took that gap down with 5.8 million shares, we got into it with 2.2 million shares. Today, doing about 900,000 shares so far. DK which is Delic Holdings. Eh, I'm not going to look at that. It's bouncing around some lows. Uh, to, 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 to what else do we have? Eaton Vance, at least it's testing something here. Uh, going into the March 1st high, $42.66 with 1.2 million shares. Got into it on Friday with 700,000 shares and pulling back on light volume today. FVIO, which is Fortress Biotech, um, looks like it's got some fairly decent support for a penny stock going back to this gap up on January 31st. That had 9.6 million shares. You came back into it with just 400,000 shares on March 6th. Uh, on Friday, you had 335,000 shares. Today, you got 170,000 shares. So. Uh, if you're looking for total lack of volume, uh, you can find it in many stocks today. Federated investors uh, breaking through the March 19th high, uh, symbol is FII. March 19th, $30.58, basically 1 million shares. On Friday, you went through that with 563,000 shares today, 452,000 so far, but continuing a little higher. You're going to watch for a lot of these for a snapback. Uh, now, on the positive side, uh, we are looking at 5.9, F-I-V-N. Uh, the last major high that we're testing right now is the September 7th high at 49.50 that had 600,000 shares. Uh, got 565,000 shares so far, uh, but that looks like that you know, right around $50 range could be support if it can get back in there in the next couple of days. Don't see a great deal on that one. Uh, Fuel Nation, uh, popping around the $6.35 high for March 21st. That had 900,000 shares. Got into it on Friday with 500,000 shares. Today, pulling back with 262,000 shares. First Solar, uh, also trying to get out of a deep, deep Dark Depression, 3 million shares on February 25th at 5538. So on Friday, 1.33 million shares. Today, 
just 800,000 shares as we go back up into this line of resistance, which is actually one of several gaps down. Uh, this gap down is from the 6th of uh, June 2016, yeah, 2018 that had 12 million shares. So uh, incredibly, incredibly light volume for most of these. Gas log, I've been waiting for these to be a great buy. Almost all these uh, natural gas liquefying companies should be doing much, much better than they are. I'm not exactly sure why they're not doing as well as they are, uh, but it certainly looks like around this 1575 areas, some support. You're down today on just 107,000 shares so far. As we talked about uh, earnings coming up for Goldman Sachs, or if I was in New York and part of the cult, I would say the Goldman Sachs, like there are many Goldman Sachses. I don't know why they say that, but they do. 206.45 on March 19th for the Goldman Sachs. That had, let's call it 3.3 million shares. Got into it on Friday with 200 or with 2.5 million shares. And today, just doing about 1.2 million shares with what we have left. Uh, hour and 13 minutes left to go. Just not much happening. Okay, Guidewire software uh, testing this $100 level out. It spiked it on March 7th, instantly gave it up back to 90 bucks, came back. Now it's gotten all the way back. Uh, that day you had 6.4 million shares. So last Wednesday, what, a million shares? Last Thursday, uh, 1.6 million shares. Friday, just 700,000 shares. Today, just 310. Thousand shares as you bucking that one hundred dollar high. Uh, to, to Hyatt Hotels, it's up there, but no real signal. Went through those double highs. Let's see what else we have out here. Okay, HD Supply Holdings. Uh, yeah, that's not that much of a difference. So we'll go on. Let's see what else we have. Helio. I didn't know that company was still in business. And uh, Hovinian must have done a reverse split. I need to take care of that one. Okay. What else do we have? HP, Homework, and Payne testing its recent high at $50.49. That's a February 20th high. HP is the signal. Nothing to do with uh, Hewlett Packard. Anyway, 1.4 million shares. It's into that today with 1 million shares. Uh, it could be worse, uh, but certainly no sign of strength hitting that. And what else do we have? Uh, uh, IDEX Pharmaceuticals uh, had a high on September 21st of last year, 157.41, 500,000 shares. Last three days in IDEX, 250. 64,000 shares, Friday 176,000 shares, today is 116,000 shares as we buck that high. Now this one looks like it's all kinds of weak, and I don't know if they we're waiting uh, for some information or FDA approval. You really need to dig into those biotechs on what's coming on the news, but the chart looks horrific. Uh, let's see what else had. We're talking about international paper as the canary in the coal mine for the economy. Uh, we've seen this go into two highs with about 4 million shares. Got into that uh, four days ago on April 3rd with 3 million shares. Friday, we had 2.8 million shares. Today, just 910,000 shares. So whichever way this market breaks, my guess it's going to be rather vicious uh, and quick. And maybe it takes till Friday to get that happening. But again, just a lot of stocks out here testing. Previous highs with light volume. ITT, November 2nd, $61.40. Spiked the high, 1.8 million shares. Last three days in this one, as we've challenged that high, 644,000 shares, 374,000 shares, 414,000 yeah, shares today. That's, of course, against that 1.8 billion share high. But it uh, doesn't matter. This is an volume up. Isn't any volume down it tells you that you're, it's time to sit on your hands so you get a sick. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're going to take a look at IWO, which is the I, uh, Shares Russell 2000 Growth Index Fund. Um, just looking at the volumes compared to March 4th at 202.97, we had 1.2 million shares. On Friday, 455,000 shares. Uh, today, just 245,000 shares. So again, uh, the warning uh, from the market is always don't be short a quiet market. Uh, and without any signal, any volume off the top, any break of some kind of trend line, whatever you're using, uh, it's best to wait for the signal instead of anticipate it in these uh, ideas. Uh, Maxim Integrated Products, which is another one of the stocks in the SMH uh, sector anyway. Uh, MXIM, the symbol for that one, December 3rd. $57.24, 5.7 million shares. Now we got into that with 2.6 million shares on January 25th, 1.3 million shares on February 25th. Oh, what's that? January 25th, then February 25th. Now on Friday, 1.2 million shares. Today, just 930,000 shares so far. Uh, as we have gone above that previous high, so the next thing you want to watch is, uh, on a longer term, on this one, is if it gets into this gap at about 59 bucks, the volume remains absolutely infinitesimal. 
Um, some of these stocks are shorting up to be shorted. And this one, go about 59 bucks almost instantly to about 55 bucks. So man, you could get a fairly decent turnaround on some of these. But again, no signal until we start seeing some of these stocks bust below the nine-day moving average on the downside after they've gone above it, gone below it, and gone back above it now. You need one more dip to set the hook. As always, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat huh? Larry.